Hey the fools. T here with another one. And this video, I don't know how long it's gonna be. It may it may be long depending on what my thoughts take me. But it's time to have this discussion because it's just kind of getting redundant and out of hand with some of the commentary surrounding uh the Nintendo Switch's power. And uh I just feel like looking at the Nintendo Switch and the power that it's outputting I feel like you should be impressed and not otherwise. Uh, obviously, it's not as powerful as the other consoles. Well, duh. I mean, just look at the size of it compared to the other consoles. no way <laughs> it could obviously not have the the hardware that the other consoles have it doesn't have the basically the size of it is holding back the fact that it doesn't have that you know doesn't have the hardware necessary to output the graphics uh that xbox one and uh ps4 are doing like duh <laughs> we get that you see it all the time in comments and you know, in people's videos, oh, it's underpowered, blah, blah. No shit, Sherlock. We all know that. We all knew that was going to be the case. Once it was revealed, um, I pretty much knew it was going to be the case before it was revealed. Because I know Nintendo is not, uh, they don't want to jump into that pool of moronic battles of power. Uh, they just, they want to, you know, they want to travel along their own lane. And they, that's what they are. Nintendo is basically the, uh, if you're on the highway, it's the caravan lane or it's the, um, it's the carpool lane. <laughs> and uh, uh, Sony and Microsoft are fighting it out on the highway, the main highway. And Nintendo is just coasting along on the side uh, with no problems and no traffic. And that's kind of where they want to be. They tried to go after power a couple of times, uh, m mainly to no avail with the N64 and the uh and the gamecube obviously and it didn't really serve them that well like duh like <laughs> can we get over this like this is who they are and i'm fine with it especially in this era where everything looks good everything is high definition uh all the character models everything looks pretty do some things look prettier or some things more detailed yeah of course but at the end of the day these visuals that we're getting on all these consoles look great and I'm happy with them. So fighting these spec wars, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's insane at this point. There was a time where that made sense, but in 2017, it doesn't make sense. And like I said, you can look at Nintendo wanted to, you know, they, they made the switch the size it is because they wanted to make it uh, a portable device as well that you can take on the go and sacrifices had to be made for that you can't be walking around with some laptop <laughs> you know sized or weighted uh, uh, game pad uh, to take on the go it's just that's just not a convenient thing and I just I'm, I'm just really weirded out by the fact that it doesn't get praised for how powerful it is for how small it is. I mean, this is a tiny little device. It's barely bigger than like a seven inch iPad, which is insane. Obviously it's thicker, but it's, you know, it's barely bigger as I showed you earlier, uh, as far as, especially compared to the other consoles. So the fact that we have a game like say NBA 2K18, which looks really good on the Switch, looks really good, very close to what you're getting to on uh, the PS4 and Xbox One, of course there's gonna be you know some some uh, give and take as far as what you're gonna get. We all know that the uh, frame rate is 30 instead of 60, 
you know, and overall that's, you know, kind of sucks because you want the, the, the highest frame rate. Um, maybe not on basketball, it matters as much, but you want the higher frame rates. But the fact that, you know, I mean, nobody thought it was going to be exactly visually on par, even though it has all the features. It had all the features that the PS4 version has and the Xbox One version has, which in itself is mind-boggling. It's amazing for this little tiny console to be able to put out a game. Your only sacrifice is 30 frames. Um, and obviously there's, there's some visual, slight visual differences, you know, some effects and whatnot. But for it to even be this close, to me, is amazing. We have this little device here that can output these graphics that are so pretty close to what you're going to get, um, that, to what you get on the, at least the base Xbox One. To me, that's something to be applauded. That I mean, that to me, that's crazy. But, you know, there's fanboys who will just, you know, they don't really care about that. They just want to discredit the console for what it is for the fanboy war. And they, you know, if their favorite company put out this uh, same device, they would be marveling at it. And, and they know they would, but they would never admit that. And so you have and you also have people that are just kind of trolls and uh, just want to get a reaction out of you. So you can't really debate them about the facts of things. And. So you never, you know, get anywhere with them. But everybody else, you know, well, I mean, I guess a lot of people in the industry are, you know, obviously very positive on the Switch. And uh, they're impressed at what it can do. Um, you hear people saying they're impressed, they're impressed. And you should be for, again, something that's just a little bit bigger than my iPhone 7 with its case on it. To be able to put out console quality graphics. Have people just harp on the sacrifices that have to be made? You know, well, the frame rate isn't as close, and or the frame rate isn't exactly the same. Like, would you expect it to be? Like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect it to be. Like, I would rather have it be seven. Like for the basketball game, especially NBA 2K18, I'd rather have it be 720p and uh, be 60 frames. But I, I don't think it's gonna matter as much for uh, basketball. Like I said, uh, maybe for. Uh, uh, like, uh, you know, 3D uh, first-person shooters or something that might matter. I'm sure it will matter more. But, I mean, we have a uh, major third... or We have a major first-person shooter coming out today that's only 30 frames per second. And nobody seems to complain about that. And, obviously, the, I'm talking about uh, Destiny and Destiny 2. Um, it's 30 frames per second on consoles. Um, so, if that's fine... <laughs> I mean, I don't... You know, I don't understand... And it's like, this thing is obviously a pretty powerful little device. Is it as powerful as a PS4? No. Um, but here's the thing. Like, people act like this is the Wii. <laughs> you know, this is the Wii to 360 or Wii to um, PS3. And it's not even close. The Wii was way more underpowered compared to those guys than what the, the Switch is. Uh I mean, the Wii had, like, what, 88 megabytes of RAM compared to, like, 360s, 512. I can't remember what PS3 had. But that's insane. And it still put out... It still put out multi-plats that were basically the same game. Obviously, the visuals weren't uh, there, and some of the DLC stuff wasn't in it. But the game itself, the core game, was there. And some people would argue... Uh, because of the motion controls, it was better on Wii because of that. I'm not the biggest first-person shooter guy, so I'll leave that up to those people. But um, I was reading this article on uh, Livewire uh, by Charles Harold, and he was, and he was talking about um, multi-plats that he felt were better on Wii. Um, and I'll just list the games here. Uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed, uh, Madden 2008, uh, Tiger Woods PGA Golf Tour... 10, Prince of Persia, Forgotten Sands, uh, GoldenEye 007 Reloaded, Tomb Raider Underworld, and, uh, you know, games like that. People that are also afraid that the Switch isn't going to get games just because it's less powerful. Again, first of all, it's not the difference of Wii to 360 or Wii to PS3. Uh, the Switch isn't that big of a difference. And even the Wii got multiplats, major uh, quote-unquote triple-A third-party multiplats.
Then it got Madden's and it got, you know, the sports games like Tiger Woods and it got the wrestling games. And the Switch seems to be on that same path, but it doesn't have as big of a handicap as the Wii had. So all this talk about, oh, you're not going to get this because of the power is nonsense. If the game, if the console sells and it continues to sell like it is, you're going to see those uh, multi-plats come over uh, in some capacity. Uh, maybe they won't have all the features, but if you just look at them and play them, they won't be that big of a difference, especially, again, compared to like what the Wii had of the visual difference. And we're talking standard definition and high def, um, along with, you know, the handicap of the the RAM and just, you know, texture qualities and all that stuff. But it still got those multiplats because it sold well. We live in an era where a lot of people just don't care about having the edge talk, cutting edge, you know, graphics. I mean, if you look on the PC, most of those guys don't have the high end um, uh, GPUs. They don't have all that stuff. They don't have, I mean, because you look at the games, the games, themselves you don't see them selling multi multi million copies of those games because um while pcs are everywhere you know and there's a lot of steam users most of those people don't have the super duper high-end crap they just want they like to play on the pc and it's convenient for them to have all their stuff digitally and they can just you know click on and play it and that's what this that's kind of what the switch is about it's about the convenience of being able to I'm sitting at home on my TV playing a big major game. I can hit that little uh, a sleep button at the top, pull that thing out of the dock, go wherever I'm going and continue playing that game. Are, are people just missing how awesome that is? Like that is a very cool thing to be able to do. Um, and that to me is what's revolutionary about the Switch. I did a video a couple of years back about uh, uh, Nintendo's uh, evolution to a revolution to evolution in the Nintendo cycle. I'm gonna uh, do a follow up, including the Switch, and you know it's weird because all these armchair analysts who talk about oh the power is not this, you won't hear them say these things, which is which is strange because if you're gonna pretend to be some kind of armchair analyst to be some kind of tech guy uh, who also games then you should look at this little teeny thing and marvel at what it can output there's there isn't a game out today that i think um couldn't be on the switch um i'm sure there are going to be some games in the future at some point maybe but graphics hasn't really brought us all that much outside of making games bigger um have the games really gotten better i don't think so i think um in some cases have gotten worse we had we getting less stuff in the game that they end up selling us later games haven't really evolved beyond being prettier they, they haven't gotten better um like gameplay wise i don't think uh, we're basically just in a prettier sixth sixth gen um and that's all about that's all that's what we've been in that cycle where it's just prettier games um from the sixth gen that's kind of where we are and then like i said in some ways it's gotten worse because uh, you have now you have just like online only games that's just all about the campaign only and it's still the same cost as a game that has both that maybe has online and uh a campaign so wanting all this power power we gotta have all this power they haven't really the industry hasn't really done much with it so i don't know why you're so some of you guys are so hell-bent on having the oh the cutting is edges of everything because we haven't really benefited from it T to me gaming has taken a lot of steps back because of uh the medium i mean you got games coming out that are a hundred gigs a hundred gigs and you you can't you have to put that on your hard drive and i mean that's another thing about the switch is people complaining about you know the nba 2k 18 i believe um i i last one i played was 2k 15 and i believe that download was around 42 gigs or something and i have the disc but i still had to 
uh, download 42 gigs onto my hard drive. And on the Switch for NBA 2K18, I may have to download 10 gigs. That problem, as far as download, having to download, to me that's a Nintendo fan problem because we all expect, you know, if we're going to buy a physical game, especially a cartridge, a cart game, um, that we don't have to download anything. And so it sucks that we have to. But how about you marvel at the fact that, first of all, we're getting a game that's almost identical to the PS4 and the Xbox One version. And obviously, like I said, the handicap is that it's 30 frames. But it's half the size. It's half the size. And you're going to have to maybe download around 9, 10 gigs uh, onto your hard drive. To me, you know, if you, the big picture is that is crazy. So I just, I don't get it, man. I really don't get it. And I don't think I ever will. I, I, like I said, a lot of this has to do with uh, fanboyism and trying to discredit somebody else's console over your, <laughs> it's pretty silly stuff. But give Nintendo credit when credit is due. The Wii U, a lot of the Wii U's ideas were half-baked and never came to fruition. But I think the Switch has rectified all of that. Uh, for the most part, there's obviously still some issues that I've talked about. It's not like I've avoided anything. I've talked about it, and the Nintendo fans get mad at me about it. Um, so you can't say that I have hidden from any of the issues that the Switch has. Uh, but I'm just talking about you know this particular thing where people harping on the power and just forgetting or just not even marveling at how great this thing is and its form factor for something in its form factor to operate this well and to give you um, at least so far for multi-plats like 2K18 and FIFA even even though it's on a different engine visually close where you know, these guys were saying, oh, this thing's dead in the water. It's so underpowered. <laughs> no, it's not. And uh, the proof is right there. It's on screen. You can see it. And a lot of this other stuff that they're bantering about is just fanboy nonsense when they should be marveling about Switch's power because of its size. I mean, Xbox One and PS4 are like five times the size and weight of this thing. And it shouldn't even be close, but it is. To me, that's that's miraculous. That is something to be admired and not shunned. Well, anyway, that's it for my video. Um, I went on long, but I wanted to cover all the bases here. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you think... I think I have a point here. It's like the Switch, for its size, to even be close to putting out multi-plats similar to the other consoles is to me it's amazing and uh it's not getting enough credit i think it will eventually when more multi-plats come out um it will finally get there but uh, right now it, it's not getting the credit it deserves as far as that stuff goes so let me know what you think about this in the comments below thank you for watching and listening as always and i'll see you fools next time peace out oh yeah one more thing play nintendo fools <laughs>